won is a huge development race. You're in a technology race against an unknown requirement. There is no room to stand still because uh, all your competitors are going to develop your car, not only on a race-by-race -race base, but also over the winter into the next season. The rate of development is impressive. If we take the race car from Melbourne and the race car from the end of the season, and they go against each other, the end of the season will literally be one second per lap faster. Winter development, which is, it was a period during which you develop the, the new car for the new season, is always quite a stressful time for the engineering teams. You don't really know what you're looking at in terms of performance from your competitors. Normally the people outside Formula One, they think that the uh, season is over, we have a nice rest for, uh, for the end of the year. Your reality is the busiest time of the year for the people that are factory based. Really the activity, you can, you can see by walking through the departments, the activity is massive. Development is huge and everybody's trying to develop faster than the other team so we need to keep pushing all the time to stay ahead. In this episode, we hear from the team's engineering department at Brackley about how you design and develop the most technologically advanced racing car ever built. The first step in a new car design is always to take as a basis the previous year's design. Even if there's a substantial change of regulation, you're still trying to use what you've learned in the previous year's design. And for 2015, there are regulation changes, small ones from 2014, but what we've been trying to do is to replicate what we've learned with 2014 car and develop from that for 2015. Obviously the 005 is a fantastic foundation to design a new car upon. Uh, that's not to say that we're resting on our laurels and, and everything is available for change. In our world, performance is relative, there is no absolute, so we're always measured relative to our competitors. However, things never stand still. Uh, if you stand still, you end up going backwards. So we have a very intense program in order to uh, develop further performance for next year to make sure we can maintain our winning position. Now we are going into the aero department. High security environment, I hope my pass works. It does. What you see on the race weekends is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, the car is being run on the race weekends and obviously the decisions being made there are very important in terms of setup and how you adapt efficiently and quickly to the challenges on the racetrack. But uh, most of the work, 90% of the performance is being done in the factory. And in order to deliver a quick race car, you need to also keep your development curve steep. And all that development is happening back here in Brackley. As all the technical departments work tirelessly to design and build over 5,000 highly complex components against tight deadlines, often the most useful feedback on how it performs comes not just from the computer simulations, but from the driver. What I can do is give feedback to, to the team and what, what the car main problems are for me driving, you know, and what's keeping me from actually driving faster, because sometimes the data cannot give that as clearly as I can. So that's where, where I can come into play and give my, my comments. And then they can always you know, keep those in mind when they're doing some aero developments. Maybe I need some more high-speed oversteer and then they'll focus a little bit more on trying to give me a high-speed oversteer with the aero development, for example. They're making us change the noses again. So we've got we to gotta, we gotta lower the nose right down here at the front. They don't like it the way it is. And that's going to be a problem for us aerodynamically because we've got a vortex that's going to come off here. Yeah, yeah. And that's going to affect the way that's going around the side of the car. So there's quite a lot of work gone on around the front suspension and the nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a few issues this year. We saw in the last race, we'd have liked to have swapped your Oz pack with Lewis's, wouldn't you, I'm sure? And we'd have been world champion been, now. It would have been pretty good, yeah. But, uh, if, if one part is wrong on the car, it could decide the championship. It's a lot of pressure felt by the whole office, really, that they don't do anything wrong. And just when they think they're on top of it, that's another thing that they hadn't thought of. So it's really, really difficult. As night falls on another busy, wintry day at the factory, aerodynamic work in the wind tunnel continues long into the night. An area of development Nico Rosberg knows more about the most. I was going to study aerodynamics at the university. That was my direction, if, it would, if I wouldn't have gone racing. So I had a, I had a place in, um, in Imperial College in London, and then I won the championship in racing. I took a, a year off, and then so I never went. So this is it. Yeah, we're um, <laughs> making good progress. 
obviously the next year's car in the tunnel, so see all our effort is on there at the moment. Yeah, pretty happy really. What's been the, the biggest challenge? The nose, right? Or? Yeah, I think well, the new nose regulations are a big change. The fact that they've, 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 we've had to lower the nose makes it much more difficult to control the vortices other than the Y250 on the front wing. Yeah. Um, and that's taken a bit of time just to just recover the performance that we lost. But what about the Y251? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, I've got no clue, so there you go. Yeah. Putting a new Formula One car design together into hardware and getting a car ready for the track is certainly a, a big juggling act. This is the most complicated Formula One car ever produced in its complexity, the number of parts, the complexity of the parts. Um, you know, just look at that as an example of that you know, complexity. These guys will push and push, and we've got to try and make them. And you know, the, if you look at the complexity of these designs, they're not easy parts to make. So it's a balance between the weight reduction we want to achieve and can we actually make the thing? You know, and this is a, a discussion we have every day. Everything has to come together in the early part of January in order to meet our first track test at the end of January. And we have to very carefully plan the aerodynamic programme, the suspension development programme, the manufacturing and design programmes. And it certainly means the workload gets very high through October, November, December. We are working on a day-to-day, on a -day, almost hour-to-hour -hour basis by the time we get into early January. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. From November up until March, it, it'll, it'll just be non-stop. There'll be parts coming out of that clean room, coming out here, in here, cured, and then off to their relevant departments. With the nature of Formula One, with all the updates, it carries on pretty much through the season as well. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's pretty intense. There is pressure, but it's not a nasty pressure. It's a good sporting pressure, which is good. Next time on the road to 2015. The drivers take us through their intense winter training routine.